Steve, it's the kind of question that people always ask people from one sport when they're watching another, but do you, do you play this game at all? I do play a little bit. I do have a, uh, a tennis court in my garden. Do you? Um, what surface? Uh, it's it's uh, um, uh, tarmac, it's um, uh, McAdams. Right. Um, that uh, used to play quite a lot, and the last two years haven't been playing very much, but I do keep the court nicely cleaned and, and ready for any moment I want to get out. And are, are the can. lines perfectly marked? Perfect. And the net? Oh. Perfect. Is it, well, is it? I came. Uh, question of sports. I did hidden personality here once before in the centre court oh, of cutting the lawn. I must yeah. hasten to add is that when they had the, gave me the mower, they wouldn't put the blades down. So I was running up and down, pretending I was cutting it, uh, but they wouldn't let me actually cut it. The and they actually gave me a, uh, a doubles net. So I've got a Wimbledon doubles net. I'm, I'm, oh. I was told not to say that. So uh, right. hopefully I haven't put any of the grounds, groundsmen in trouble because of that. How are you keeping fit these days? Uh, reasonably, I thought I was sort of half fit really, and I'm doing a race, a rowing race out in, ahead of the Charles in October with uh, Matt Pinson and uh, some of the guys I used to row with. Um, How about, far is this? Uh, it's five kilometres, so uh, you need to be very fit for that, and I'm only half fit. Is the competitive sort of fire still burning a bit, or has it, have, the, have the embers died? Uh, no, it always burns. Um, the, the problem is with any sport is that you've got to be able to be on it mentally and physically. Uh, mentally I think I've lost it a little bit and physically I've certainly lost it. But uh, we're doing a Veterans 8, we're at the average age of, uh, of, of 50 plus and uh, we, we agreed that we would do some ergo tests but there wouldn't be about selection, the crew is fixed who's going to be in it. Um, but we would just sort of say, and I thought okay I'll be sort of middle of the pack. I'm at the bottom of the pack by no. a long way, yes. That's a hell of a blow to the vanity, oh, isn't it? Oh, God, it's, it's, a, it's appalling. It's appalling. But the only thing is, is that each week I'm getting a little bit fitter yeah. and I can sort of set my sights on somebody and knock them off the perch. So, uh, no, but here's a serious and, and rather a maudlin thing to say. But is there not a risk, once you get beyond a certain age, of pushing yourself, if you haven't been keeping yourself regularly topped up in terms of fitness terms, is there not a risk of, you know inflicting some kind of terrible damage on yourself there is um, some of the guys i'm sort of middle of the age of, of the, the uh, age group at 53 we've got three people at 57 but they're all those 50 50 the three people at 57 are very very fit and uh, they haven't really they sort of dropped out of international relative one of them dropped out relatively early and then came back into it and was probably one of the fittest 50 year olds there are in the country uh, so trying to compete with him is very difficult and I must admit the first time we started going out in the eights a couple of months ago I was more concerned about my ticker than I was about anything else. Yes. That, uh, that very easy to sort of push yourself to what you remember you could do and uh, that, uh, so a little bit of caution but uh, each session I'm getting a little bit better. I just have just a couple of questions about tennis just to round things off. You know, we're watching Nadal and watching Federer and the guys who've been at the top of their game for a decade and more, and you were there for almost two decades. The, the thing that always amazes the mere mortals amongst us is just the motivation to every day want to keep being at the top of your game. And you must watch these guys and understand how they do it. But how do you do it? Well, that, uh, watching uh, Nadal in his second round match is that uh, uh, he was under a lot of pressure. Um, and it was really nice to see the passion, the desire that he had for it, the hunger to be there, and the excitement when he actually won. And I find that very, very refreshing of, of how many balls they've hit, of how many tournaments they play, is, is the hunger there to win of every match is, 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 is incredible. I suppose at the end of my career, it, that hunger was, was going a little bit. That uh, I, I, I loved the competing. I, I'd certainly sort of mix it with anybody when it came to racing. But actually getting the training done, the preparation from that was really tough in, in, in my particular sport. So was, I found that really very, very, very refreshing. Well, look after yourself. <laughs> I, Keep working I will. on that ergo, I will. but not too much. <laughs> <laughs> the problem is, is that, that you get out of the boat, you can fudge it a little bit because you can just row to the ability that, that you are at that particular time. The problem with the rowing machine is that digital readout and it tells you exactly what you're not doing and that's the most depressing side of it. Switch it off. <laughs> Cover it over. A lot of people, actually, they're just doing an endurance session, actually cover it over so they've got nothing to see and they just do it by the feel. I'm still a numbers man. <laughs>